Missouri cattle producer Garland Joey Nelson said he knew he was violating his Farm Service Agency loan agreement when in 2013 and 14 he sold cattle that were collateral without notifying government officials. According to court documents, Nelson, then 20, also hid some of the profits in a friend's bank account, later moving it to his own, and used alternate versions of his name to avoid detection. During an interview last year, Nelson told Market to Market that he had gotten in over his head financially while trying to build a commercial cattle feeding operation. He ultimately pled guilty to fraud charges. But after spending more than a year in the U.S. penitentiary at Leavenworth, Kansas, Nelson was released in March 2018, hoping to make a fresh start on his family's farm near Bramer. Later in 2018, he told Market to Market that he'd learned some hard lessons about farm management. I can tell you all the things you don't want to do when it comes to feeding cattle that way or loaning money from them or getting entirely too deep with somebody. It was a bad experience, but I learned a lot from it. Learned who you can trust and who you can't trust and just how far to go before things get too bad. Within nine months of making that comment, Nelson would again be under investigation. This time for the July 21st disappearance of two Wisconsin cattle producers. Caldwell County, Missouri officials announced that human remains found on Nelson's farm were believed to be, based on DNA tests, those of the missing men, Nicholas and Justin Diemel. On October 23, 2019, Nelson, now 25, was charged with, among other crimes, two counts of first-degree murder in connection with the brothers' deaths. The charges of murder are Class A felonies, which carry a range of punishment of life in prison without parole or death. The Wisconsin men had previously sent cattle to Nelson to feed and sell on their behalf. Court documents say the father of the Demos told officials the brothers had traveled in late July to Nelson's Missouri farm to pick up a $250,000 check. They were not heard from again. Those documents also say that Nelson acknowledged taking a rental truck used by the Demos and disposing of two bodies he said he found on his farm. In addition, a used rifle cartridge was found in Nelson's clothes. He told officials he had been hunting small game. Nelson is being held in the Caldwell County Detention Center pending a trial. Dr. Michael Roseman, an Iowa-based psychologist interviewed long before the men disappeared, said he should not comment on the Nelson case, having never met the young man. But typically, in other less serious cases, producers who get into trouble often make decisions that were intended to keep their farm or ranch financially viable. I think there are some farm people who will resort to illegal activities to get ahead because they feel uh, compelled to do whatever it takes to hang on to the land and resources needed to farm. And their motives aren't always to hurt anybody, but uh, they end up hurting other people anyhow. Occasionally, farmers who cheat federal programs or mislead consumers are accused of using the profits for purchases the government would describe as being for personal enjoyment and pleasure. In 2016, for example, an Idaho farmer was sentenced to three years in prison for selling regular alfalfa seeds as organic. Court documents say he used the profits to buy an RV and a boat. People will do things that they wouldn't normally do just because uh, uh, their livelihood is under threat and they'll do what they think they have to in order to maintain uh, the quality of farm operation that they're accustomed to. Doesn't make it right, it just is a factor that contributes. In rare cases, some psychologists believe, those farmers who were charged have committed suicide to avoid either serving time in prison 
or facing the public shame. Roseman says the data shows a shift away from older producers taking their lives. Now we're seeing younger farmers from age 45 up to their late 60s as the most vulnerable for self-harm. And we're trying to figure out why that is. Possibly it has something to do with uh, a sense that I only have a few more years uh, to succeed and it's make or break time. During his market to market interview a year ago, Nelson described feeling badly for another farmer who was in prison because of the impact it had on his wife and children. He farmed and he was there for his kids every day of their life till that point. And, you know, his wife still has to farm. You know, they still have cattle and they still row crop and everything else. And she's got to do it all by herself. Nick Diemel, a 34-year-old from Navarino, Wisconsin, is survived by a wife and four children. Justin Diemel of Pulaski, Wisconsin, was 24. In his interview, Joey Nelson described how he felt the day he was released in 2018 after spending 13 months in Leavenworth's minimum security satellite facility on the fraud conviction. You get nervous about everything you do from that point forward. You, everything you go to do, you're like, okay, how can this be twisted or turned around where I might get in trouble for it? For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.